a little uh, nighttime spot. Let's get my upper. And these will open up nicely in a couple of days. They're going right into the fridge. Oh, this is why I hate netting. Oh, look at this guy. Look at that. Look at all the offshoots. This guy even has this one. See that? <laughs> Put that one on. We'll do. <laughs> do this one over here. everyone it is the friday before my market so my market's on sunday and i figured i would do a different kind of video just showing you me preparing my flowers from harvest all the way to bouquet and then to the market so this week i am actually going to have a combination of using my own grown stems plus supplementing um, with stems from a local grower. So I have a bucket, it's sloshing with some fresh clean water um, and we're gonna go into the field and pick some sunflowers. Chancy joining us. Come. Or not. I feel like I finally have stems. So one of the reasons why I'm supplementing this week still with um, some stems that I haven't grown is because it is supposed to be really good weather. By good, I mean it's supposed to be like 90 degrees, but it's gonna be sunny. So last week or two weeks ago at my market, it was like borderline thundering, um, but it was rainy for both uh, basically the morning. So we didn't have a great turnout. Um, and I just think this weekend's going to be pretty good because it is also going to be a themed blueberry festival type of day. So when they do these types of themes, they actually take out ads in like the state um, paper and that kind of stuff. So um, it really helps attract traffic at, into the market. So I actually think I'll get people who aren't normally uh, customers coming in who live nearby. And so hopefully, you know, there'll just be more foot traffic going through the market. I think for, they did a, a strawberry festival about um, four weeks ago and they said something like 11,000 people came in. So, you know, hoping for at least, you know, even like two thirds of that traffic would be awesome. But let me show you the state of my sunflowers because I feel like I've just been staring at these and they haven't been going anywhere. And finally, I am starting to see some buds crack. So this is one that is pretty much ready to harvest. And you can see that a lot of these have petals and they are opening up quite nicely over here. So over here, you know, this will be um, hopefully for my market in two more weeks, but I definitely have quite a bit that are showing um, that they are almost ready. And there is the dreaded Japanese beetle right there. All right, so here's my bucket of sunflower blooms. Um, I had to definitely trim down the length. So I'll give you an example. This one here, I mean, it's still pretty long, but 
Um, this is one of those extra long buckets and it was already tilting over and realistically, I do not need more than this for bouquet stem length. So um, I'm actually gonna let the rest of them kind of open up a little bit more um, just because for the market on Sunday, I wanna have some that are a little bit more fully open. So we're gonna um, start harvesting, harvesting some other stuff like dill for my filler. Let's take a second here to talk a little bit about dill as filler. So this is what it looks like after dill, you know, the, the dill that we cook with throws up a flower pod. So if you let these go a little bit further, I mean, this one's kind of a little bit more dry than let's say something like this one, which is a bit more fresh. These will start turning into seed pods and then you will get the seed for dill. So I actually bought culinary dill um, years back, like 2019, um, and I was trying to grow them for microgreens. So I got like thousands upon thousands of dill seed and I don't cook with this much dill. So I thought, let me try cover cropping this row with some dill and some peas. And that's what I did. So I tidied it, it I tidied it up a bit more just so that I could have like, you know, the zinnias in here um, and, I figured I would keep some of them for filler. So this is coming in handy right now for my market this week. Um, but yeah, this goes to show you that, you know, for some of the culinary stuff that we're growing for our own stuff, like let it flower. Um, another good one is actually cilantro. So I have some flowering cilantro in my um, home garden. I'll show you a bit later. Um, and we will actually also harvest that for shorter bouquets. And these are the flowers I am also going to be using to supplement the ones that I harvested earlier today, the sunflowers. So I'll definitely have an abundance of sunflowers and some zinnias, but not enough for me to really wanna make like 25 to 30 bouquets for this week's market. My goal for this week's market is to test how many I can sell, as in I would rather give away 10 bouquets if I can't sell them, I want to test my threshold because that is ultimately how you make more money, right? Um, you like the more you sell, the more you make. So I'm trying to figure out what that uh, what that looks like for my market. To give you a close up, here are some fillers. Um, I asked for some focal so lilies over here. Some more filler. This is actually bee balm, which I never consider growing until now. Um, some like Dara. This is um, Orlea, and of course, Status. <sighs> Nothing that a little hat can't fix with bed hair. We got back really, really late last night from a friend's house. By really late, I mean like 12.30, so it's not that late, but late for me. And took a shower, slept my hair, wet hair, but now it's good. So, those are all the flowers I get to play with for uh, making bouquets for tomorrow's market. There's still some more sunflowers outside that are like, I want them to get a little bit more open and bigger. So those are the sunflowers that I think I'll do in straight bunches. And I know I've repeatedly said, I'm gonna do straight bunches of sunflowers, but for these, I think I'm actually gonna combine them with filler because I have so much filler. And yesterday we brought for a hostess gift, gift for our friends, um, a bouquet of four sunflowers, one bee balm, or yeah, one bee balm and two feverfew, and it looked so full. Um, it looked like a $20 bouquet, just like that. I think I would put in an extra sunflower for the farmer's market, and then we would call it a day. So I'm actually gonna make several of those bouquets, but what I'm gonna do first is I am going to um, 
to prepare my craft paper sleeves, get them all stamped, cut, um, so that way, you know, I'm ready to go like an assembly line right after. is um, the power of an assembly line when it comes to scaling, meaning that you saw that in the time lapse, I basically rolled out all the paper at the same time um, and folded it at the same time. Then I stamped it at the same time. Then I cut the slit at the same time. And now I am folding at the same time. And it's just because you are gonna be way more efficient um, in doing repetitive things uh, at the same, or you're gonna be way more efficient doing something in a repetitive way than trying to do it on the fly with a bouquet. And then it also just gets a little bit annoying because you're kind of in this bouquet making mindset and then you have to like put the bouquet down, you have to take out the, the, the paper and then roll it, get out a scissor, right? So this way everything is prepared. And these are like the little scaling efficiencies that do make a difference at the end of the day. Um, you know, this is actually the first time that I feel like I'm actually, I'm going to be making a significant amount of bouquets. Like I'm hoping to have over 20. And so this starts to matter if you're making like five, six, you know, whatever. But once you start going above, I would say the 20 bouquet or two dozen mark, uh, time starts to matter. And one of the things that I'm doing right now is I took note of when I started this. Um, and I'm going to take note of when I finish making bouquets and that is going to count towards my labor costs for this market, right? So it's not just me sitting at the market. It's also how long it takes for me to make these bouquets. Now, the harder part is uh, figuring out how long it took for me to actually grow these flowers. So some of these flowers I grow, some of them I bought from someone else. Um, and that is a work in progress in terms of me trying to track those labor costs, um, you know, at the end of the year, I'm probably just going to do like a guesstimate of how many hours per week, multiply those hours by the wage, and then, you know, go from there, right? But, um, you know, this is at least a much more tangible way for me to track my costs. All right, so let me show you how this sleeve would look. So I cut the slit over here. So this is my paper. This is my bouquet. So it's got... Um, two stems of lily. These ha are just about to open up. It's got quite a bit of yarrow, um, some status, um, a snapdragon here, uh, straw flowers. So it's really two main stems with a bunch of filler. And I'm gonna sell this for $20. To do is I like to snip it or not snip it I like to staple it right at the corner over here so that way it um, that way the it hugs the stems on the bottom and then we do another staple up here and this is it there you go. all right the hat is off because it was way too hot in here for a hat and for those of you who know me, I don't care about what my hair looks, so same thing for YouTube. Um, but I wanna talk a bit about color theory. So the intention for me for this week's bouquet making session is to be more intentional about the color uh, combinations that I put for my bouquets. Now, I never thought about color theory in bouquets. Um, I think we all, have an innate feeling as to what looks good together color wise but not all of us are good at that right um you know i am someone who doesn't necessarily struggle too much with like interior design if i have a lot of art to work with this is not a good room because this room needs to be completely redone um low priority right now it's our dining room but in any case uh you know i was i i, I watched the video back in january from christina of stina bees now Christina has since taken, I think, a bit of a step back from flower farming, but I first found her, it was like one of those like flower digital summits and she did a video on cut flower profitability and you know how she scales 
things to be more efficient. And I was like, you're speaking my language here, sister. So I followed her and she did that video on color theory. And her first question to her viewers was if flowers didn't have color, do you think people would buy them? And I think the answer is no. She thinks the answer is no. You probably also think the answer is no. Um, and while some flowers have scent, I would say the majority of flowers that we grow really don't have scent. And so they're really buying it for the color and the splash that it brings to a room, to like a kitchen, right? Um, it's really colors that attract us. So given all of this, her second question was, why are we not focusing more on color combinations in my bouquet? And I was like, very good point. So. I finally have enough flowers to be able to play with the color wheel. Now, the color wheel is probably something that you've been exposed to, but if you haven't, you can just Google color wheel, you'll get something like this. And the tenet is that colors that are grouped together, like in the same quadrant, will look great together. Um, so, you know, we're talking about like the red violet to the orange, like if you group this together, um, it would look great in a bouquet. But the other tenant is that colors that are opposite of each other also look really well together. And it's because they have this dynamic contrast that really attracts our eyes and vision towards that combination. So for example, um, blue and orange is a really good, um, is a good pairing. Like in interior design, you'll normally see like a navy background with like a white couch and it might have like some like yellow orange pillows on there, right? If you really get to like funky design, this is where the color wheel comes into play. Like, have you ever seen a room where you're just like, that is not ever something I would have thought of in terms of combining colors, but it works. And so they use the color wheel for that. So, you know, I think a lot of times we think about palettes, right? We think about, I want a romantic blush palette. I want a bold palette. And there are tenants of the color wheel in that palette. So how do you define bold? Well, in this case, bold can be defined as blue to yellow orange, but bold can also be red and green. I mean, think about Christmas color combinations, right? Red and green and white, like really, really pop out. So, you know, white here as a whole, I think, you know, helps round out a bouquet color combination as a whole. But, you know, for me, what I wanna do is I wanna create a few color combinations and put them into their own buckets and then see how they sell at the farmer's market. So, you know, there are theories that, you know, certain types of color combinations are just more visually attractive to um, a broader range of people, but we will test that out and see how it goes. So I've actually already made a couple of bouquets um, and I wanna show you how um, I worked with the color wheel to get to that combination. So. These two are pretty similar in the sense that they are playing off of the yellow blue type of color wheel. And obviously there's some pinks in here. So I'm going a little bit broad with the color wheel. It's not just blue and yellow. Um, I don't have enough flowers for just blue and yellow and it's technically like a violet, right? So I'm playing kind of like, you know, two colors on one end versus the two colors on the opposite end with some white. And so, you know, this is probably something you would have put together on your own. Um, but you know, why is it potentially visually attractive for someone? Well, it's because you've got the contrast, right? That I just talked about from the color wheel. Um, and then the other thing here is, um, actually I wanna show you the third bouquet that I made, which this one also has elements of the last one, but I threw in a bit more deeper burgundy and just like deeper reds as a whole. And this is what it looks like. So this is much more of a contrast to a bouquet like this, right? I think the difference between this type of pink versus this burgundy on the Dara really makes for a significant contrast. And even the Lily has elements of that burgundy that you saw on the Dara. So this one to me is a lot more bold than this one. This one feels more summer. This one feels more uh, more autumny because of that boldness. But just because it feels more autumny doesn't mean that someone doesn't want this kind of bouquet right now. And what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to try to keep track of which ones sell first and in the order that they sell in. So 
Here are just a couple examples, and I'm gonna try to create more contrast in the bouquets um, just so that it's easier for me to track it. So it's been two hours already, which is like one hour too many um, for a bouquet arranging. But I've had a lot of fun, so I'll show you the results after. But um, I said I'd want to do straight sunflower bunches, and I started just realizing like that pop of sunflower in a bouquet is so awesome. So um, I ended up running out of sunflowers, and I went out to harvest some more. Now these are not super open. That one is. Uh, some of these are gigantic, but um, they're gonna be great in okay so um, I'm gonna keep on chugging along and um, I also got some straw flower some zinnias that are coming out so um, none of the queen series have come out like the queen lines and stuff but you know next market I'll have those and yeah so the other thing is I still have a lot of filler left so that is gonna be for uh, that's gonna be great for sunflower bouquets because I was gonna do six for 15 and I think now I can probably do like four plus filler for $20 so let's get going all right, before we actually go into the sunflower bouquet making piece, um, I wanna show you something. So um, this is what happens when you harvest status too early. You see that it gets very wilty. Um, and the way that you know when to harvest status is these flowers need to be open. So um, this one actually has one open flower, but let me show you. So in the blue, like this is seeker blue, um, it actually feels papery, but you'll see the white here. And then for the apricots, uh, you'll see the yellows here. So you can see that these are still, you know, pretty alive and these are wilty. And these are probably a few days out from being like this. So just make sure that you see the whites or the yellows before you harvest. So 40%. Ultimately, I have run out of big stems, but I started um, looking at all my short stems, including the zinnias, and I thought about creating what I call a shorty bouquet. So this is an example of a shorty bouquet. I'm literally taking all the stems that are probably just about a foot long and putting them into a bouquet like this. And you know, there's really no main focal flower except for maybe I guess the zinnia themselves, I actually have some stock, which makes them more fragrant, but this is that bold pop of summer color. And these will go for $10. And you know, this is like a nice one to put like in a small, small jar, like in an office or maybe like in a bathroom. So, you know, just another idea to use your short stems. Um, and let me show you what short stems look like. I mean, they barely even, um, you know, look, uh, how do you say, like come to the edge of the bucket. My stock was pretty short, so you know this is actually a really beautiful double. It's just, it's really, really short. And unfortunately, the other day I forgot, I picked the stock and I just left it on the table. So these actually had decent sized stems, but now they're dead, so I can't use this. Um, but I think I can make at least one or two more other shorties. So I'm gonna get cranking on that. So going back to what I said earlier, this is what I like about the flexibility of not buying sleeves because obviously my shorty here is not gonna fit into a big sleeve. So 
these sleeves still will uh, will work. And what I do is I just uh, rip a little bit of a shorter uh, piece of paper and I fold it and then I'm able to actually just um, wrap it. So I'll show you right over here. Let's see, get it down a little bit. All right, so here we go. This is decay number one. You guys can see it, yeah. And I realized that if I staple a little bit more like here in the middle, I can get away with one staple. Shorty number one, or number two technically. And I had a pre-made shorty here where I didn't get a chance to make the paper. So let's see. Look at that. Two shortest. I mean, these look pretty good. They look like above $10, but um, I mean, they really are like stems I really couldn't use otherwise. I mean, it's like a lot of status um, and really just some, yeah, like short zinnia. So I'd be happy putting this in my bathroom, wouldn't you? Whew, it's about three, four hours later from when I first started. I did have lunch and I've been helping my husband a bit in the garage. So we are CrossFitters. Shout out to all my other CrossFitting uh, YouTube watchers out there. Um, so we have a garage gym. And since we moved in, the priority has been the field out um, in the back from prepping it to the deer fence. So now that we finally finished deer fence, we've been able to work on the garage. So, but... I want to show you how the bouquets turned out and let me just say i can't believe i didn't like sunflowers before until now and i think it's because grocery stores don't really do sunflowers justice they're usually in straight bunches or i don't know when even when they're in a bouquet it's kind of like scraggly so anyway um i didn't do straight bunches like i said um that i would because the yellow just pops so well so i'm going to show you a few um color combinations um, I showed this one before. This one's like the bold combination here, but then we've got a little bit more, you know, this one was intentional for like blue, yellow, a bit of purple type of, of bouquet. Um, this one, I try to stay in like the pink, yellow, green categories. Um, this one is similar to the one before, which is, let me bring this out of the sun. I have a skylight light up here, makes it more difficult. But anyway, um, yellows, blues, white, and a hint of pink for summer. Because when I just did the blue and the yellow, it was a little, it needed a little bit of a pop. Um, this one over here, you know, we're starting to get more into the heavy pinks. So here, you know, you got the pop of yellow, but then a lot of pinks and white over here. Um, and then this one's like a straight on, I would call it more monochromatic pink with a pop of yellow from the um, Rubecchia. But yeah, so you can see this one's like very pink themed. This one's also a little bit more on the pink side. So like you see that apricot status, obviously there's a yellow from the lily, but the, the bee bomb, the yarrow, the dara, those are all pink. Um, let me see if I could find another one that's a bit more of a contrast. So I think these are actually mostly it. Um, I did do some sunflower bunches with filler. So these don't have any lily at all um, and I mean, these have not opened up yet, but when they open up, they're gonna be really, really nice. Now, what really surprised me was that my favorite color combination was not one from the color wheel that was on opposite sides. It was actually within like a quadrant of each other, and that is these shorties. I mean, these shorties are, I like, here, let me show you one of them up close. This one has, like, this one just screams bold summer to me, right? So you've got the blue status, which is more violet. You've got some red zinnias, which I am not a fan of red. There's some deep pink, like I think those were part of the apricot um, seeds. And then um, some like, a uh, this is I think, pur uh, what do you call it? Uh, this is purple silvery straw flower color. Um, I don't even remember. And then there's actually some purple stock. So I just really love 
this color combination here. Let me show you another one that I did for the shorties. Um, the shorties all had short stems, so I didn't really have much to play with, except they all happen to be these like deep, rich colors, and I just love how they contrast. I think these shorties are actually gonna do pretty well. Um, and I actually wanna show you the one where I put the cilantro flowers in. So here, this is the one. So you can see the peaks of the white. Those are the cilantro flowers. Um, there's some stock in here. That's the copper red straw flower. There's that pink zinnia in here, some nigella seed pods, and of course, a little bit of the rose iron stock. So I am really happy with how these turned out. And um, I still need to count how many bouquets I have, but uh, we will hopefully be selling these, um, hopefully sell all of them out tomorrow. Um, and if we do, then that will be a very good market day for me. Everyone, we are just about 10 minutes away from market opening and my stand is full. So I'll give you a little preview of what the setup looks like. guys it's almost 12 30 and just wanted to give an update we sold out a lot of the bouquets we've got one two three four five six of the bigger bouquets left and two shorties i got a little bit nervous there because it was pretty slow and then it really started picking up so we'll see how we end the last hour and a half hey guys we are back from the market so my market ended at 2 p.m and it's about 4 20 p.m right now i had some lunch i'm finally having my coffee my husband makes fun of me because not only do i refuse to drink coffee before a market i also refuse to drink water during a market it was 90 degrees and he goes you're being irresponsible but i was like if i have to go pee then what i do because i'm only one person manning the booth and the bathroom is like a good five minutes walk away so Needless to say, uh, you know, staying hydrated right now. Um, but man, like one of the things that I've started to come to realize, and I knew this before, but now I'm actually feeling it, is I don't know how people like Flower Hill Farm, Nicole, does all of it on her own. Um, like a market day is not just a market day. So for those of you who, you know, have been doing this for a while, you'll understand what I'm saying in that like when I got back home, I quickly had lunch, but then I had to go turn the compost pile. Afterwards, I have to go out and mow the perimeter of um, my field, which is uh, closed off from the uh, the regular mower because of the deer fence. Um, then I have to do, you know, some other stuff. I have to like do some other types of composting things. So there's a lot, right? Um, and then also I had to clean the buckets. I had to clean the, liv uh, the, the living room table. These are all just time and costs that you don't think about when you first start out and now as i start thinking about it i'm like wow how does anyone make money during flower farming um but let's talk about a couple of things so let's talk about what sold let's talk about how much money i made and let's talk about profitability so let's talk about how much money i made because i'm sure that's always the first question that people have at the top of their mind. So today I made a hundred, I made $708. And you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's a good number. I just think I had the wrong expectations going into this weekend because the market manager told me that, oh, it's blueberry fest and we did strawberry fest. It was better than opening day traffic and people did so well, blah, blah. So my husband and I, this morning when we were talking, goes, what's your expectation for today? And I said, a thousand dollars. Um, and so when 1030 rolls around, which is half an hour into the market and I have zero sales, um, I started getting nervous. And then the neighboring vendor, um, he came over, he goes, well, if this is any sign, there's no line around the bread guy. And you know, that does not bode well. So it started picking up after I would say 11 PM, 11 to one. Um, the last hour of a market is always like a dud anyway, but it was so hot that I think it kept a lot of people at home. So the heat also made some of the flowers wilt. Um, so at the end of the day, from a flowers perspective, I sold $384. I actually did not do as well in soap and candles. I only did $324. Usually my soap and candles, I'm doing at least like 400. Eh. I mean, last market was rainy, so I don't really count it, but normally I'm doing at least like four or $500 in soaps and candles. But you know, soaps and candles are even though they are uh, consumable they take a while to consume 
So I think that's also part of the reason why. Um, so yeah, I came in with 21 big bouquets that I sold for $20 and four what I call shorties that I ended up selling for $13. I feel like from the beginning of the video to the end, I've increased the price uh, continuously. And I meant to sell these at $12, but the problem was on my signage, I could not find a two. So um, I found a three and I was like, this is good enough. I was in a rush. So $13 it was, I sold three of them. I mean, people loved them. And the last one that I couldn't sell, this is what I did. I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't sell because I wanted to keep it. I mean, like, look at this. So I put in the two sunflowers after to give the pop, but I mean, it's, um, it's a pretty gorgeous, um, bouquet. So this is going to sit in our living room where the dog is going to be the main being who gets to enjoy it. So, um, of that, um, $384 that I sold, that means that I sold, um, 19 bouquets worth $20 and then I sold three bouquets worth $13. Um, so not bad because I more than made my money back from the perspective of I bought all that filler and the lilies for $140 from the grower. Um, initially we agreed on $45 a bucket for just filler, like no focal flowers. And of course she gave me more than $45 worth. So I made her charge me $50 for a bucket. Um, and then I bought, um, Asiatic lilies off of her 10 for $20. So $2 a stem. And for the most part, I used the lilies as a focal flower in those $20 bouquets. Some of the folk, some of the bouquets had two lilies, but you know, for the most part, I got the majority of my bouquets using that. What was surprising to me was at the market, um, bouquets that were just lily did not do as well as even just straight sunflower bouquets. So most people wanted to find a bouquet that had both a sunflower and a lily. And a part of it was because the lilies were picked right. They were picked, you know, some of them were open and some of them were just about to crack open. But a lot of people um, really liked the sunflower because those sunflower heads were just like cracking open so they could see the color and they could see what it would look like when it opened, but it wasn't fully open. So they felt like they got their value. Even though I think when you get lilies that are picked at their prime, you know, the color showing, but the flowers have an open, like that technically is a better value, but you know, you have to educate your customers, right? So needless to say, um, the first bouquet that sold was the autumn bold looking bouquet, right? This is the bouquet that I said screamed a little bit more autumn but it would still resonate for, you know, people at the market. And that was the first bouquet that sold. Um, there was one bouquet which had um, an orange lily, uh, a, a normal yellow sunflower, and, you know, just some like really nice filler. And it was like two people were practically fighting over that bouquet. And I was like, there's a million more bouquets here. I mean, we got to the point where people had such a hard time choosing that they were like doing circles around the table because the way I had it set up, um, the bouquets were kind of like in a line, but it was like a T. So they were going back and forth, back and forth. And it like, it got to the point where it was like paralyzing for choices. So, you know, color theory may have in some ways backfired in the sense because I couldn't get people to pick. I thought people would just start gravitating towards one or another, but it probably also speaks to the fact that I didn't have any particular um, how do you say, like, even though I was trying to diversify the types of, um, opposite colors on the color wheel, there were still similarities that were enough between all of the bouquets where I don't think one necessarily stood out versus the other. Now, the exception is actually the shorties because some people just gravitated toward the shorties and it wasn't because of the price. It was because of the color. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get some more of those bold zinnias paired with this, beautiful, if I can get this, this beautiful yellow, right? So like, you know, just this red and yellow combination works really well. Plus you add in the status. And I just think it's a really good summer pop type of color that really attracts people. So yeah, so um, I'm pretty happy with how we did from a bouquet perspective. Um, I had a few bouquets left. So obviously I am enjoying one. Our neighbors get to benefit um so my husband just went across the street giving bouquets away and you know 
our neighbors are really awesome to us. Um, they are really like the types of neighbors that you would hope that you have. I have a neighbor who went to go get chicken poop for us for fertilizer. Um, they helped us clear the sod. The other neighbor across the street, you know, watches our, like makes sure that nothing happens to our house when we're gone. Um, they, when we first moved in, they brought us a box of fudge with a card. I mean, like who has neighbors like that nowadays, right? So it's just like, I really don't mind even giving them a bouquet every single week week um, if I had to. So um, I'm sure they will also enjoy those flowers. Now um, let's talk about, well, let's wrap up the color piece, right? Because I think from a color theory perspective, um, it was less about the color combinations and it was more about the flower combinations. So um, assuming I have enough stems next time, I'm going to try to test this out again, hopefully with, <laughs> with more direct results. But let's talk about profitability. Um, because $708 is a decent amount of money. Um, but when I look at my costs, so my cost of goods sold is three, was $307. Now this is both a combination of soap, candles, and flowers. The way that I did the cost of my flowers was I, I did the 140 that I paid for the filler and I divided that across the number of bouquets that I sold and it came out to like $9 and change. So I rounded up to $10 a bouquet. For my shorties, I just called it $3. Now, I understand that if you grew these from seed, it's probably a little bit subjective in terms of how much you, you know, would be putting in for a bouquet. But at the minimum, you know, if you have a focal flower like a lily, how much that bulb costs? right? Um, obviously the one and dones are a lot easier to kind of estimate from that perspective, but think about like your time, how much money you spent on like fertilizer, soil, that kind of stuff, and just have a guesstimate, right? Like I would estimate that, you know, a normal sunflower bouquet, I would probably put a cogs down of like $5 and that would include my time with that. So, um, so yeah, so $307 for that. Labor, labor in this case included three hours of me putzing around making the bouquets. I say putzing around because I was having a lot of fun with the color combinations, but it also included time for me to go pick up the filler. It included time for setup, tear down. It also included my husband's time to drive me there, help me set up and then come pick me up and tear down. So, you know, while I could do all that by myself, it really is helpful having an extra hand. It is a difference between leaving at 215 versus like 240. Um, and, and when you haven't had lunch, it is a big difference. So um, total came to 173 for myself and my husband. And I pay myself that $173. At the end of the day, that $173 is going into my personal bank account. If I need more money for my flower account, that is a different um, transfer out. But um, again, I am operating as if I'm hiring someone um, just to make sure that I get into the habit. Uh, mileage to market this time was $20. Um, mileage for the inventory was $9 because I was able to meet uh, the grower halfway. Credit card feeds added up to $16. Sales tax was $44, which leaves us with a grand total of $99. So, you know, not, again, nothing that moves the needle, but $99 is still $99. And the labor piece is factored in. So remember, if I didn't factor in the labor piece, I'm looking at close to like $292 or $272 worth of profit, which is pretty decent, right? Like that's a lot of stuff that you can use to put back into the business. So, um, but again, you know, this kind of gives me an idea of how much I need to sell in order to be profitable because remember my time is my time there, right? That's a sunk cost. So I really need to sell more bouquets. And for me, I think I actually could have sold more bouquets. So the traffic wasn't as much as I thought. Now I did a total of 28 transactions. So let that sink in because there are hundreds and hundreds of people who pass by this market, even on the bad day. And I did 28 transactions. I saw a lot of people eyeing the bouquets at the end but then basically passing because some of them were wilting. In fact, I had two people pass by the same bouquet that was like nearly perfect, except for one Dara stem that was like flopping over. And the Dara stem is like not the star of the show, right? It was a small Dara stem and it flopped over and they passed on that bouquet. So when I took that Dara stem out when it was quiet and I put it back, it sold, 
right? So it's kind of funny, just our perception, like, cause obviously customers don't have any idea of like how much each flower is worth and how we're pricing the bouquet. They just think, oh, one wilted stem means like I'm not getting my full value. So um, I, I know that if it was a little bit cooler and I think if I had more open sunflowers, I actually could have sold at least like two or three more bouquets. So it tells me that, look, every single time I bring 20 or more bouquets, I'm always selling at, um, I'm always selling at least 20. So that's a good sign for me. Um, so really the question becomes how much above 20 can I get? And as we get into the heat of the summer, I know the traffic's gonna start to, to go down a bit more. So for me, a personal goal is to be able to shoot, to bring 20, at least 20 bouquets and sell 20 bouquets. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below how your farmer's markets are going. Um, and if you have any suggestions on color palettes that you really, really like, 